Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Wednesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and last night the Mets got a homestand started off on the right foot with a dominant 9-2 victory over the Cleveland Indians. I want to talk about last night's game, uh, actually two games from last night. One was the Mets game, which I watched on my phone, and the other game is the Syracuse Mets game, which I watched in person in Lehigh Valley. So I'll talk about both of those uh, those games on today's show and get us ready for tonight's game against the Indians. Rocking the Athletes Logos uh, LFGM shirt today, um, which I love. Um, love to wear that to work, too. It's going to be a fun thing to explain. Um, I don't have to. I mean, everyone kind of knows that I... All I wear is Mets stuff, so uh, I have that going for me. But anyway, the Mets uh, last night put a hurting on the Indians um, behind strong offensive performances from Michael Conforto, who clearly is uh, overrated. Uh, Ahmed Rosario, a bust. Uh, J.D. Davis, terrible acquisition by Brody Van Wagenen. Noticing a trend here? Uh, these are things that people say uh, and have said about the 2019 Mets earlier in the season, and I don't hear a ton of those things being said now, that these players that I just mentioned are actually good players. Imagine that, what happens when you let a full season progress. You can actually see the players more than what they were in the first couple of weeks of the season. <clears throat> or that they're more than just defined by how they perform during a two or three week slump. Um, the, the Mets are, are firing on all cylinders offensively. Um, they and the Indians had a have, the Indians have a good team and they had a good pitcher going last night. They had an All Star on the mound for themselves, and the Mets still were able to defeat them um, and then pile on at the end of the game. And then one thing I'll give Mickey Callaway credit for, he said, you know, the offense piling on like they did let them let the Mets and let Mickey not have to use Lugo. And he mentioned Diaz's name too. I, I you know I I'm still not sold that Diaz belongs in high leverage situations yet, but. Um, I, I did like the logic there that, you know, if as long as the offense keeps doing its job, um, this this questionable pitching issue becomes moot because you don't need to worry about the bullpen. The other thing that help, that helps in that regard is is the starting pitching going deep. And last night, Stephen Matt pitched into the seventh inning, recorded one out before allowing two base runners and giving way to Justin Wilson, who very nicely escaped trouble. Um, to uh, to keep Mats uh, at, at two runs, uh, only one of which was earned uh, through six and a third innings. And Mats threw just over 100 pitches, I think, or just under. I was I wasn't 100% uh, certain on that, but um, he looked really good. Um, and I was most impressed by the way that he was able to get out of trouble early in the game. There was a and again I don't remember exactly which inning it was, but it was early second, third, fourth inning, something like that. And uh, it was when the Indians got on the board. Um, with uh, after Frazier made a bad play, and then there was an, a second uh, misplay. No, so not not a misplay. It's fair. Frazier made the bad play at third, made the Ole sidestep missed play, and then um, Panic couldn't get to a ball that I really felt like he should have been able to get to up the middle. And the thing that impressed me the most about Mats in that predic predicament is that you would almost expect to see Mats completely implode when. The, the going gets tough like that, and that's, that seems to be the way Matt has, has always operated. Um, but he was different last night. I mean, he he bared down, he escaped trouble, he recorded three outs with two runners on base. That's that's a, a great job by Matt to get himself out of that inning and to limit the damage to a team that is is again very very good. The Indians are a good team. They're almost twenty games over five hundred. So. You know, this is not the White Sox, this is not the Marlins, this is not the Pirates. This is a good team. And the Mets handled them nicely last night. Uh, Pete Alonso, um, Pete Alonso had a nice night also. Um, uh, particularly the, the, the double that he hit late in the game to bring in, I think, the seventh and eighth runs of the, of the, of the game. Um, it's just worth noting how strong Pete Alonso is. He, like, flicked that ball off the end of his bat. And he hit it so hard that it beat the center fielder and rolled all the way to the wall. I mean, it got into the left center field gap, and it rolled all the way to the wall. And, Pete, I mean, just so unbelievably strong. 
Um, I, it's it's so nice to watch him. He drove in his 96th and 97th runs last night. He's going to break 100 very soon. He's going to tie the, the franchise home run record very soon. He's going to break it very soon. Uh, it's just that if nothing else happens this season, um, you know, Pete Alonso can uh, Pete Alonso's rookie campaign can be right up there in, in Mets lore, uh, right next to Jacob Degrom's from a few years ago. Uh, and and Dwight Gooden and and uh, Daryl Strawberry and all of these Mets greats who just had phenomenal rookie years. Uh, this one though, I mean, this is take the rookie part out. This is a top five, top ten performance by an offensive player in franchise history. And we're talking about a rookie, so um, he, it's been fun to watch Pete, and uh, I'm I'm going to enjoy doing so uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, on the injury front, I'll segue now to uh, to the AAA Mets and Syracuse Mets. Um, they were in Lehigh Valley uh, playing the Iron Pigs, the Phillies AAA affiliate. And um, my dad had got tickets for me and my kids and my brother. And uh, we went to see them last night. And uh, little did we know that we'd be seeing Brandon Nimmo's first rehab game at AAA. So uh, we got to see Nimmo play last night. He had four plate appearances. Uh, in a bloodbath of a game, it was uh, we left in the eighth inning. We're combined 29 hits at that point and uh, 19 runs scored in the game. So it was not a pitcher's duel. Uh, even though Chris Mazza did pitch for the Mets uh, and got the start, and he pitched pretty well through four plus innings, started to fall apart a little bit toward the end of the fifth, and he was pulled uh, pulled after that. But regardless, um, Nimmo was leading off, and as I said, he got four at bats before he was lifted. And um, he, he looked good. He looked like normal Brandon Nimmo. He got hit by a pitch, so that was, you know, right on brand for, for Nimmo to get plunked. Um, he had two base hits and um, went two for three on the night. Um, played center field, and uh, again, it, it's, he, looks, he looks good. He looks healthy, um, and he, he should be back. I mean, theoretically, he should be back by the weekend. If he plays these three games... Um, in Lehigh Valley, I mean, he's less than 90 minutes from City Field. Um, just ask Rajai Davis for that Uber driver's name. Uh, and, uh, and you know, Nimmo can can hitch a ride to City for Friday to open up the weekend set with the Braves. Um, having Brandon Nimmo back is going to be huge. Even if he's not going to start right away, even if he's just a bench piece, just to have a professional hitter on the bench instead of Aaron Altair, uh, is is a huge boon, and when he is healthy, when he is in the starting lineup, he can play center field. Conforto can shift back to, to right. Davis stays in left, and while Cano's on the injured list, Jeff McNeil can play second, <clears throat> and that's a strong, strong lineup that the Mets can put out there. Uh, defensively, a little bit challenged, particularly in the outfield. Um, not a whole lot of range there in left field with with Davis and and Nimmo's not exactly a a, a pick'em center fielder, but. Uh, still, he's an improvement offensively over Lagares, who, while he's hitting well now, I don't expect it to continue, um, and certainly over Altair. The other move the Mets made um, uh, early, uh, yesterday was to promote Rajai Davis from AAA, and uh, they uh, sent Walker Lockett back down, and they designated Brooks Pounders for assignment. So the Brooks Pounders era in Queens is over. Uh, Brooks Pounders DFA'd, and uh, so we, we wish him the best in his future endeavors and whatnot. So, um, so back to uh, back to Lehigh Valley, uh, just real quick. Um, Rene Rivera is the catcher for the uh, Syracuse Mets, and I, it's the first time I've seen the Syracuse team this year, and and seeing Rene Rivera. Um, his numbers now look; these are AAA numbers. I get it, and T Tomas Nito has put up. Pretty good numbers in the minors as well. Um, I believe he was um, a batting champion or close to it at one point. I think it was during a double A campaign. Um, so I get that these are minor league numbers, but Rene Rivera is hitting the cover off the ball with, in the power department at least. Uh, he's got 26 home runs, if I remember correctly. The batting average is like 258, 257. Um, I'm, I'm leaning toward. Uh, swapping Nito and Rene Rivera, I, I really am because I, I just I don't feel like Nito is 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 providing any value on the Mets bench right now. I just feel like he's a a, 
uh, a wasted roster spot because he is such a, a limited offensive um, tool, tool set that uh, I, I'd almost rather see see uh, Rivera come up and be the backup catcher. The only concern there I would have in seeing Renee last night is he looks like he's put on some weight, and I don't know how um, his defense would you know would continue to shine or would shine or if it would shine at the major league level right now. Um, the only one way to find out would be to, to see what he does. So uh, that that was my other other take from uh, from last night's game um, with the Syracuse Mets. So. The Mets continued their series with the Indians this evening. 7-10 start. Marcus Stroman on the mound, uh, returning to City Field for his fourth start as a Met. And uh, I'm hoping that Stroman can piece things together tonight a little more cleanly than he has in his previous three starts. Um, he, he's come away with wins, but he's not been real crisp on the mound. So it'll be nice to see him recover some of that crispness and um, I'd love to see him get back to the, um, the, the the sort of antics that he uses to sort of throw hitters off their timing and where he will alter his delivery and kind of pause. I just love stuff like that. I think it's hilarious. And I, I just remember there's a one, there was one gif that I saw that um, on Twitter that was like him pausing for three seconds with his leg up in the air. I just, I did crack me up. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'd rather see him win, but if he can't, I want to. I want to see him be like super entertaining. Um, but that'll be this evening, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the results from tonight's game, which will hopefully be another win for the Mets. So until then, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at Mister Underscore Met, and as always, let's go Mets. <laughs>